Hello YouTube, this is uh, Paws and Claws. I'm going to have a little merger of my my favorite, two favorite things in the world. One of them is my German Shepherds and the other one is the love of movies. I'm going to be reviewing today The Irishman, which we, well me and my wife had seen yesterday. The Irishman is based about, as everybody knows, the um, mostly about the life of Jimmy Hoffa who is played um, superbly and brilliantly, as usual, by Al Pacino. And Robert De Niro plays the Irishman. He was a truck driver that um, got the notice of the Russell Buffalano crime family. And Robert De Niro, at first, was helping to steal some of the merchandise from his trucks and give it to the Mafia. It's caught the attention of the Mafia Russell played by Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci in this movie is not the cowboy, live-wired, animal, brutal, sadistic killer that he that you usually see, as in, as was the case in Casino and Goodfellas. He's mild-mannered. He's old. He's soft-spoken. Never really ever raised his voice. In fact, he never raised his voice in this movie. He is not the Joe Pesci that um we're used to seeing in the Martin Scorsese movies. But that being said, don't get turned off by it because it, his performance is actually very brilliant and one of the better performances of the movie. These dogs just, they can do this all day. They can literally do this all day and just the three of them just walking around with the ball in their mouths. They just love it. The movie is about three, it is about three and a half hours long. If you can sit through the movie, and if you can, um, if you're one of the type of people that does not have a problem sitting in the movie theater for three and a half hours, as long as the movie is worth it, then this movie might be for you. Um, I don't, I don't have a problem watching movies that are extensive, and uh, film time. But the movie does carry into the uh, into the into the um, performance of Al Pacino, who is electrifying in every scene. He lights up the screen with every performance and every time you see him on the screen, he lights up the performance and you can see that Al Pacino is Al Pacino playing Jimmy Hoffa. And that's what you would expect from Al Pacino. Al Pacino, a lot of his acting is similar no matter what role he's playing. The only time I can probably say that that's not the case has been in Scarface when he played Tony Montana. You could not tell that was Al Pacino playing Tony Montana. That is a legendary and a cult classic performance from Al Pacino. But here Al Pacino plays Jimmy Hoffa and he's brilliant at it and he just electrifies and he brings the screen to life because into an otherwise very soft, very mild manner gangster movie brought to you by um, Martin Scorsese. It is, it's a movie that's um, not very well, um, not very well fast paced. In fact, it is. It isn't very well fast paced. But the performances have you hang around and keep your interest. Surprisingly enough, for a good two hours of the movie, as everybody knows, Al Pacino playing uh, Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa did not want to leave the Teamsters Union. Jimmy Hoffa was in, was imprisoned. Jimmy Hoffa was in there for four years. Jimmy Hoffa came out. Jimmy Hoffa wanted to take over the take over the Teamsters Union. Fitz, which was his second in command, however, could not leave the post. Did not want to leave the post, and more importantly, the crime family did not. Oh, the Buffalino did not want to leave that post as the leader of the uh, Jimmy uh, as leader of the um, Teamsters Union. This to the ever more uh, ever more um, determination of El Pacino and, and Jimmy Hoffa Jimmy Hoffa persistence of not letting go of his empire that he considered that that was everything and everything in his life and he was going to obtain back the helms of power in the Teamsters Union no matter what the Irishman played by Robert De Niro towards the end of the movie well actually I would say like three fourths of the movie uh the Irishman, Frank, was his name, played, played again by Robert De Niro. 
desperately tries to tell him, hey, you know, back off. It's, it, it is what it is. Trying to convince Jimmy Hoffa to release power and control, more importantly, of the mob money. Because what Al Pacino was doing is Jimmy Hoffa, Jimmy Hoffa wanted to control the money. And by controlling the money and by not releasing the money, and by not releasing and signing off on the casinos, he could take power of the casinos away from the mobsters. That was not going to settle well for the Buffalino family. And towards the end of the movie, you have where Al Pacino and Jimmy Hoffa, according to Martin Scorsese, version of what probably what really happened to Jimmy Hoffa. And by the way, here's a spoiler alert. Jimmy Hoffa is taken into an apartment, or actually he was taken into a home by Robert De Niro. He was convinced that there would be a meeting where everything could be hashed out, where everything could be settled, where all disputes and differences can be settled once and for all. Now Pacino, at first, was reluctant to go to this meeting. In this meeting, by the way, in its initial presentation to Jimmy Hoffa was presented by Frank, Robert De Niro. The first time that it was presented to Al Pacino to go to this meeting to try to resolve the issues and the differences of the Teamster Union, Al Pacino backed away from Robert De Niro's request to have a sit-down. Now, we all know if you go to a sit-down, you're probably not going to be able to get back up from that sit-down, and it's probably going to be a permanent sit-down. But little on in the movie, Robert De Niro calls Al, calls Jimmy Hoffa and asks him if, he has, if he's thought about the about the sit-down, and then, to the surprise of Frank, the Irishman, Jimmy Hoffa agrees to have a sit-down with the Buffalino family. Frank had no idea that he was the one that was going to take Jimmy Hoffa to the home where there would be the meeting, the alleged supposed meeting with Jimmy Hoffa. It's there where Jimmy Hoffa is taken into the home. Jimmy Hoffa enters the home, and again, here's a spoiler alert. And Jimmy Hoffa enters the home, and as he enters the home, he sees that nobody's there, and he feels, again, one of the things that Jimmy Hoffa hated is that no one was there for the meeting and that he was being stood up. You cannot be late to any of Jimmy Hoffa's meetings. You're late. You're ten minutes late. You're late. Some of the words and phrases that he uses throughout the movie. Jimmy Hoffa attempts to leave the home, but as he leaves the home and tries to open the front door to exit the home, Frank, the Irishman, puts two or three bullets into the back of Jimmy Hoffa's head. Jimmy Hoffa falls onto the ground, where, according to a lot of my arms, armchair research, it's probably the way it went down with Jimmy Hoffa. In Detroit, the mob had control of a lot of crematoriums. They had control, they owned them, actually. And what they did is that they probably killed Jimmy Hoffa and then took him to a crematory where he was burned. And the movie suggests that that is exactly what took place. The Irishman, again, is about three and a half hours long. The first two hours of the movie is, is very subtle, very slow-paced, but that doesn't mean that the acting doesn't captivate you, that it doesn't hold your interest throughout the first three quarters of the movie, because it does. The performances by Joe Pesci, again, are very mild manner. They are not the live wire cowboy, out-of-control performances that you would expect from Joe Pesci, from other of Martin Scorsese's movies. This is more of a crime family movie that is more... Um, more geriatric. It is, um, the mobsters are old. The pacing of the movie is slow, but very well, very well acted by Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, and Al Pacino. Again, the two biggest performances in this movie were from Al Pacino and Joe Pesci. Robert De Niro is Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro in his um, killing sprees, not killing sprees, but, but, but in his assassinations, almost is, seems comical. It's almost as if you're seeing Mo Howard from The Three Stooges carrying on these assassinations the way uh, Robert De Niro played out that, those performances where he uh, assassinated individuals that he was ordered to kill. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, but that's just the way I took it. It just looked like Mo Howard from The Three Stooges. When you watch the movie, you'll probably agree with me, or you probably won't. Robert De Niro is Robert De Niro. I much more rather enjoy his performances from his earlier movies, Taxi, The Godfather, of course, um, Goodfellas, and other movies too as well. They don't necessarily have to be related to crime. 
but here Robert De Niro is Robert De Niro. There's nothing really more. There's nothing more that Robert De Niro has given us in a performance that we haven't seen before in, in any of his other movies. Um, the last quarter of the movie, or the last hour of the movie, half hour to 45 minutes of the movie, just entails him getting older, realizing what he's done, and as a result, family members have pulled away from his life permanently. And this has been to his desperate attempts to try to reconciliate with his daughter to no avail. It's sad to see that, but it was a little bit dragged on. The movie could have been, could have been shaved by at least an hour. Um, would I recommend the movie? I would recommend the movie, yes. Definitely I would recommend the movie, but I would recommend the movie if you want to sit home, um, take breaks, pause it, grab lunch, <laughs> sit in your backyard, play with your dogs, and watch it on Netflix, because the movie is out on Netflix. But it was out very in very limited release here in Chicago. It was released and it was released in once in one theater, probably released only in one theater in the whole entire state. It isn't a movie that is has a grand cinematic atmosphere of a grand cinematic uh, quality where it, it it would probably be more appreciated in a cinema. It's a movie that can be just as appreciated at home, especially with what TVs are, what they are today with wide screens, flat screens. 46, 51 inches. You can very well enjoy just as well there as you could at Netflix. That was one of my disappointments. I was expecting something a little bit more cinematic, uh, enthralling, something that, that you could only appreciate more in a theater. But really, that doesn't mean the movie wasn't good. Casino and Goodfellas are their own typical movies. One is, is in, in terms of the violence. But here we have a more relaxed, more laid-back more slow-paced movie um, if one in, expects to go in there and watch a, a, a performances uh, like Goodfellas or, or the Casino you might be disappointed but if you like good acting if you like movie telling if you like the telling of the movie that is told by Frank the Irishman throughout the movie then you will enjoy this movie Martin Scorsese seems to have wanted to slow down the pace he wanted you to feel for the characters not so much of what they uh, what what they can do or what they have done, but more uh, more of a quality of humanity, and especially in Joe Pesci, where he's he's soft spoken. He's he tells Frank the Irishman in in the most softest of terms, but with deliberate intent, what he has to do to Jimmy Hoffa, and so there it is. The violence isn't very graphic. Which is good. I mean, I don't want gore. I don't want graphic. I don't want... It's not something you would see like in Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver where the, where the gore was just towards the end. Where the violence for it coming out in 1975 was, was extensive. It didn't play out like that. It played out as a crime thriller. If you know Jimmy Hoffa or whether you do not know Jimmy Hoffa, I would suggest that do a little bit of research on Jimmy Hoffa. As a child, I remember watching on TV when he disappeared. And what I liked about the movie, too, is that some of the original broadcasts telling the, uh, the viewers back in 1975 of well, how Jimmy Hoffa just mysteriously disappeared. Hi, little girl. How are you? Come say hi. Hi. How are you? I remember those. And they're kind of nostalgic. And I can't go and end this movie review without having to add one little, one little thing, one last little thing. Now, I did see The Irishman, and I did see Jimmy Hoffa's performance played by um, Al Pacino. And so I cannot go without having to have some sort of a, a comment about his performance as Jimmy Hoffa, Al Pacino, and Jack Nicholson's performance as Jimmy Hoffa as well. And it goes a little bit without saying that I think that Jack Nicholson played a little bit better Jimmy Hoffa and was a little bit more convincing as Jimmy Hoffa in that movie than Al Pacino was. Not, not to take anything away from Al Pacino, but Al Pacino, you could tell, was Al Pacino playing Jimmy Hoffa. When Jack Nicholson played Jimmy Hoffa, you believed that that was Jimmy Hoffa. And you couldn't believe that it was Jack Nicholson. It's that great of an actor that Jack Nicholson is. Um, just, just a little side note. It doesn't mean that you should get discouraged from watching this movie. That's just a little side note, a little comment. The movie drags on a little bit. Sorry that I'm dragging on a little bit with the movie review. But in the honor and 
in remembrance of Gene Sisko and Roger Ebert, I would give The Irishman a thumbs up. Not way up, but just up. If you can, if you want to, it's not a big rush to see it at the screen. Wait for it on Netflix. You might enjoy it a little bit better. Paws and claws. Out.